Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Wellness Doctor Network, where we connect the community to top-notch doctors. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with my guest, Dr. Charles Shudlovsky. Good to see you. Thank Thanks you. so much for joining us. He's a neuro-optometrist, and he specializes in developmental vision, brain injury, specialty lenses, special needs. And today, we're going to talk about your role in treating athletes. Oh, it's, it's one of my favorite aspects of what I get to do, um, working with athletes and teams to enhance vision skills uh, that, that may be uh, limiting them. What, what we're trying right. to do is find out, hey, what, what, can bring us, what can bring that athlete to the next level? Is, is some of the, the lack of vision skills slowing them down or not able to make them cross up to that right. next level? And do the athletes in particular already know something that's holding them up or do they come in also just to see if there's any edge they can get? Well, we see it both ways. Okay. Uh, we'll see that we have some athletes that'll come in. Hey, I'd like, to, I'd like to just improve. I don't know if there's anything specifically wrong, but I think, uh, I think I, I'd like to see if I can improve these vision skills so I can pick up the ball quicker or I can... Uh, react quicker, things right. of that nature. And then you have some that, you know, the, their hitting coach might have said to them, you're not picking up the ball quick enough. Mm -hmm. You probably need to get, get your vision checked. Wow. Um, and so th we may see them that way as well. Right. And you see uh, high school athletes, collegiate athletes, professional athletes. Yeah, the whole gamut of it. I mean, even, uh, you know, uh, even younger athletes. I have okay. uh, one eight, uh, eight year old we're seeing right now uh, for some sports vision work. Yes. So it can even go to someone at that level. But I would say a bulk of them are high school, college, and, and professional athletes. Right. Well, the eye coordination is so key and so obvious with that. And then, so what are some of the tools and some of the elements that you utilize to identify, you know, where some of their weaknesses might be or where there might be improvement? Well, sports vision has really evolved in the last, let's say, 10 years with the, ad, with the use of computers and things mm -hmm. of that nature we, and, and tablets. We can do with so much more now. Yeah. Um, and so we have some great tools at, a, at our disposal. One of the tools that we use is called the Synaptic Sensory Station. And the Synaptic Sensory Station uh, was actually originally developed by Nike. Um, and so what's really cool about it is it does 10 vision skills for athletes. But what it has is a huge database within it so that... Say I'm working with a um, college-level baseball player who plays the infield. I can put that data in there, do their vision skills, and see how they compare to others in that, at that skill level. At that level, yeah. But I can also then say, hey, you want to play Major League Baseball, this is where your level needs to be. That and, is incredible. And so we can show them the variation of that. Another tool we use frequently is called Right Eye, and Right Eye is an eye, electronic eye tracking. So we'll give them some... We'll go through a, a, an eye tracking uh, battery where we'll look at smooth eye movements, smooth, what we call smooth pursuit movements. Mm -hmm. We'll look at saccadic eye movements, which are jump movements. We'll look at circular pursuits. We'll look at reaction time, things yes. like that based on their eye movements. And we can do a full analysis based on that. Um, it also works in, in a way as a concussion test as well. Right. Um, and w one of my favorite cases we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, we actually utilize that tool uh, in the screening because we can do a complete screening with the right eye in, in about 10 minutes, which when we work with the professional teams, that's about all we have. Right. So we, we can utilize this tool as a really good screening device uh, for our athletes. Um, we do balance testing. Why is balance important? Well, vision is one of the three components to balance. You have visual, you have vestibular, and you have tactile. So if the visual system is not telling you where you are in space effectively, your balance system becomes affected. And how important is balance for uh, um, a hockey goalie or a, um, or a batter in baseball right. or pitcher. something like that, mm -hmm. or a pitcher? So balance is something we certainly look at. Um, you know, as, as a major factor as well. And obviously, uh, one of the important things, and the, the biggest thing in sports today, the biggest news in sports today is concussion. Yes. Um, and we have to be able to look at that. So to get some good pre-concussion screenings uh, from a visual standpoint, um, because the truth is, is that one of the first things that goes after a concussion, whether it be sports or any other type of concussion, is eye tracking. Wow. So mm -hmm. by getting a good uh, eye tracking evaluation, uh, whether it be right eye or something like the King Divic test, which is another test we'll use for tracking, um, we can get a really good preseason pre evaluation. And then if they have a concussive uh, injury mm -hmm. or a suspected concussive injury, we can go back and look at those skills and see how it's changed. And then we can track their progress as they go through a therapy program right. um, and we can see how they're improving. 
That is so impressive. And I love the fact that vision is obviously a big component of it, but neurology is really a major component of it and it allows you to get to the root of the issue. Absolutely. I mean, the question becomes, are we really changing the eyes or are we really changing the brain? And really what we're doing is changing the brain. And once we get better uh, neurological control of the visual system, guess what happens? Skills will improve. Right. And so what does treatment look like? We've talked about some of the, uh, the tools utilized to identify some of those weaknesses. What does treatment look like? What can they expect from that? Well, treatment looks like a variety of, of, of different activities. Now we can use things like the synaptic sensory station, right. which we mentioned, um, and right. they have, a, they have a, um, a ther some therapy tools within that. We also have a, a program we utilize called NeuroTracker, and it's a wonderful program, and it works on visual attentive skills, multiple object tracking, things of that nature. Uh, we can even do use our balance tester to also use, do, do for therapy, and we do that frequently. But then it could be also ball and bat activities. Um, we have balls hanging from our ceilings called Marsden balls, and we'll use the, we'll swing the Marsden balls and have them do activities with that. Uh, we have another activity we use frequently is called fit lights, and they're lights that we have on the wall, and they can hit the lights. Yes. Um, and then we also have uh, something just we just got recently, which I'm really excited about. Um, uh, as we, and we just put it in one of our uh, professional sports facilities and it's called Binovi Touch and it's a it's basically a light board and uh, lights will go off and you have to hit the lights as you go through it and you have to react to them really quickly and maybe with a variety of different stimuli as well. Mm -hmm. So we might change the stimuli, you might do a near-far activity with it, you may have to do what we call a go-no-go -no -go activity is you hit the, the green lights and when they turn red you don't hit them. Wow. So we're okay. really excited about something like the Bonovi Touch. Well, that sounds fun. It is fun. <laughs> and being an athlete, I mean, everything is competitive, so you always want to beat your last score. But then again, being um, a doctor that does this sort of thing for the teams also, you can have some healthy competition, but it's actually improving the whole team. The best top point is when you, t when you take something like the Bonovi Touch and put it in a facility and you have the athletes competing against each other. <laughs> right. They love it. It's, it's, like, it's like another type of competition they get to do, and, and they really, really enjoy it. Awesome. Now, before I let you go, I know you have thousands of success stories, but can you share one uh, with the athletes in particular? Well, there's one that I'm thinking about that I saw recently. Um, uh, it was uh, toward the end of the last hockey season with one of my professional hockey players. And uh, we, had pre we had done a preseason screening of the whole team with the right eye device. And, um, uh, and he... The, the neuropsychologist had sent him over because while he cleared their protocol, he said, you know, his eyes looked a little funky. Would you take a look at him? Okay. And certainly he came in here and uh, we re-ran the right eye on him and we saw his scores went way down. Um, and, and then we did some balance testing with him also. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, okay, we need to go do some therapy for him. And so the team approved the therapy and we started doing therapy with him. And, we, we retested him after six sessions of therapy and then again after 10 sessions of therapy and his skills improved. To, not only did they go back to what the baseline was, but his skills at the end were above his baseline score. That's incredible. So yeah. that's really what, what, what the goal is and he was able to return to play but right toward the end of the season. So that brings up a point. We've been talking about uh, going from elite status to you know, kind of getting that edge to super elite status, but also saving people's career and putting them back in the game. Oh, absolutely. You definitely want to get them back in the game. You want to get them to a, to a point where they're very comfortable um, playing their sport. Uh, they're not always looking behind. You know, when you're sitting there looking for injury, guess what happens? You, you get injured much more rapidly, <laughs> yeah. uh, usually. So um, getting to a point of confidence, uh, you have to yes. have, have them regain the confidence in their skills. But once again, getting them to that elite level uh, and, and really making their skills so automated that they don't even have to think about it. That's really where uh, the athlete really gains quite a bit. Awesome. I love seeing you light up when you talk about this. And being an athlete yourself, a hockey player. Yes. You still play hockey? I do. And you're a fanatic. They, they still let me play, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us oh, today. I pleasure. appreciate your time. It is an honor. And thank you for joining us for another episode of the Wellness Doctor Network, where we connect the community to top-notch doctors. And even within the network, we collaborate so we can bridge the healthcare gap. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer.